Hello, my name is Andrew Geary, and welcome to Seismic Sound Off In Depth Conversations in Applied Geophysics. In this episode, I speak with Dr. DJ Kumar. DJ discusses his course, the value of membership at SEG, and the activities essential for the professional development of geophysicists. This conversation covers a wide range of topics from synthetic seismograms, construction, to how to get the most of your membership at SEG. DJ has taken advantage of his activities throughout his career and is excited to share his lessons learned for this audience. This episode is sponsored by CGG. At CGG, it has a positive outlook for the future, an optimism that drives it to constantly push the boundaries of what's possible. Blending new thinking and advanced technologies, CGG helps you understand and solve the world's most complex natural resource, environmental, and infrastructure challenges. Let CGG help you to see things differently. To register for DJ's course or join SEG, visit seg.org slash podcast. Now for our conversation. You joined SEG as a student and continued your membership through your early professional years. Why did you continue on as an SEG member during those early years? So, Andy, uh, first of all, thank you for the opportunity and SEG for giving me this chance to talk to you. I spent uh, four years uh, being a student member, and I really enjoyed all the benefits, uh, including you know, conferences, uh, courses, workshop. And those days, most of them used to be either very cheap or free. And after four years, it becomes part of my career, part of my life. Uh, it's like a society, you know, like a community for me. And that became a very natural as I moved from school to uh, industry. My employer, you know, uh, continue supporting me and to be part of the society like a CG. And, you know, I being a geophysicist in the industry, it's very natural to, you know, be active in the CG. Whenever I got a chance to present or collaborate, you know, always uh, looking for people to interact with. So it's very natural. The SCG uh, became part of my, my, my life. Was there anything different from your time as an SEG student member? You know, there's always a lot of free events and opportunities to, you know, to your adjustment as an early career SEG member. So you mentioned cost, of course, as you become a full <laughs> member, it becomes uh, costly. Uh, so apart from that, you know, the interest also changes. During uh, my, my PhD time, I had a little bit different interest. But when you join an industry, depending upon the focus of the company or the projects, your interest a little bit changes. So you may become more selective in terms of the topics. So that is one aspect that changed is I become a bit more picky in what topics I want to focus on more and interacted more folks involved in those topics. But I had actually more, uh, more uh, interest in knowing those experts in those topics and therefore my horizon a little bit increased in terms of the, the people I want to know and get interactions with. So that was the, the main, I guess, change, you know, going from the student to the early career life. Uh, in those times, we didn't have like EPIC, which is now uh, very popular in the younger folks that they can connect with uh, you know, all the young members all around the world. So that's very nice. And I really recommend to you know, join the EPIC group. Yeah, I just if if people are unfamiliar with that, Epic is the the early professionals organization group at SEG. So that that is a very active group and definitely would get engaged. And you mentioned cost there, and I, I would imagine that is probably the biggest shock for a student going uh, to early career, especially now maybe as companies aren't providing that benefit like they did in the past. You know, what would you say to a student debating whether or not to continue their SEG member after maybe now they're going to have to pay for it? as opposed to, you know, being able to, to go for free. Fully agree with this issue. Uh, you know, two years ago, I was a chairperson for the membership committee for SEG, and we have this uh, discussion all the time. You know, the cost is different for different country, but yes, it's not zero now. So, so there is a cost involved. You know, as I said, you know, SEG being a, a community or a society, uh, it has a vast resource. Uh, not just in terms of the geophysics technology, but the people, 
the people with such a wide uh, range of experience and the topics so this is the place if you want to know about particular topics and if you want to know what technology is coming in uh, this is the right place to be part of it whether you meet people during the annual conference uh, you know a workshop or any meetings get uh, to see people get to meet and interact so scg has really a wide range of resources for different age group or different you know part of the your career kind of transitioning a little bit and you mentioned some of the opportunities and, and other things at SEG maybe other than uh, even annual meetings and those things you know you work closely with continuing education at SEG why did you initially decide to get involved with that particular program continuing education at SEG I told you I enjoyed the SEG courses for a long time and I still enjoy it to really make a difference uh, or to really you know see what's possible courses that might come in the future you become part of it so you know i had my interest in in teaching as well a little bit and as you say you know teaching is the is the best way to learn uh, about a topic so i started you know becoming part of the the continuing education committee along with some other committees and that helped me you know work with the other members in in the committee and you know there's so many experts there to see what they are thinking in terms of what, where the in- industry is going and that helped actually me to find you know steer your your career that this is the topic coming in the future and we are always looking for a member or the experts who can provide the courses to you know fulfill those uh, future coming a uh, need to the uh, members so become part of it and that's the point become part of it and that's how you can make a, a difference it's always important to get engaged, uh, no matter how much anything costs. That's that's really where you get the the benefit out of it. And you have your own course now on SEG's on demand platform. It's called Synthetic Seismograms Construction in Use. And just looking at your course for a moment, you know, giving people maybe a little sneak peek of, about what it is. What are a few of the key uses for synthetics? So, as the name goes, it says synthetic seismogram. That means we are numerically estimating the seismogram the seismic response given an earth model and often we use a well log to design our earth model so once we know the earth model in terms of the reservoir properties we can simulate the seismic response and if we can simulate then we know what we expect to see as a seismic response given an earth or given a reservoir property so synthetics becomes the key uh, for any seismic interpretation in terms of the reservoir uh, p- properties or heterogeneities in the in the reservoir okay so uh, for example I'll give you one example uh, of the, the seismic synthetic seismogram is the seismic well tie during a seismic well tie we compare the seismic from the seismic uh, recording with the synthetic seismogram coming from the well logs and that is the link to get the geological meaning of our seismic because seismic wiggle has no meaning uh, unless you really link with the geology and the way we do it is through the well log based synthetic seismogram and that one step itself the one i mentioned seismic well tie has many other uses for example we get time to depth correlation because the seismic is often uh, is acquired in time and the well log is acquired in the depth and that's the time depth relationship we need uh, through the well type process plus we get to find the seismic wavelet and the phase of the data i mean there are multiple uses of that nowadays machine learning and the synthetics are used even to train those algorithms those machines to predict the future using the seismic data so we focus actually primarily on the seismic interpretation part but synthetic seismogram are also used in designing for seismic acquisition or processing time but we focus in this course in the interpretation part you know i'm i'm curious what resources or activities or maybe even associations or organizations do you consider essential for the professional development of early career geoscientists was something in particular pretty impactful for yourself as you were developing as a geophysicist well what i guess the communication is very important uh, i mean i'm still improving my communications how to communicate to different level whether we are communicating as a technology to a, uh, an advisor or we are communicating the message to a management so uh, depending upon how we want to communicate 
uh, presentation wise also the writing wise communication is very important and it's a, it's a challenge uh, there are some uh, naturally very good communicator we have in a cg world but many of us still improving every day the communications also the times are changing the job markets are changing the industry trends are changing so we should be open to learn new topics for example and uh, these days the co2 sequestration or the machine learning technologies are coming very fast so we should be open and always you know uh, learn the new ideas coming in in our market and there again they being part of the cg you will naturally be know you know what technology coming what is should be learning next the cg has the competency management system cms where anybody can go and you know check uh, their knowledge gap uh, in particular you know sub discipline and therefore look for the courses or the meetings that they can improve the knowledge gap yeah and even in the leading edge you know it was featured uh, about a section on a special section on carbon sequestration so that's a, another resource there for SEG members as well if you were talking to a, a student going through you, you mentioned kind of the job market is changing a little bit right now what would you what would you encourage them to focus on a student right now you know about to go out in one to two years so yeah that's the big questions and we always uh, see the worry uh, in the in the students uh, when we interact with them as a student of geoscience of course we want to be good at geoscience so of course focus on the core geoscience topic but these days in the digital uh, age i think if you have a uh, experience or the 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 background in the computational uh, science then that helps it's easier to pick up some of the new uh, technology that is computational based coming so having a course on the computational will help or some experience plus you know as a geophysicist if you are you know focusing only on a seismic i'm suggesting to also if possible go for the other courses like electrical methods or electromagnetic methods or even other discipline like petrophysics or reservoir engineering just even have some exposure in those subjects it will be easier in the future if we need to pick up those uh, topics while in the industry plus you you know what are the possible with those technology so i think uh, as a student uh, uh, stay with the core geoscience but explore some of the method that is not commonly uh, you know taught in the maybe university for example non seismic courses look for somewhere else uh, if there are a course available so plus computational aspect is uh, right now is very useful yeah that's a good reminder and and i i hear a lot about the the importance of multidisciplinary collaboration just across companies even now so getting understanding of, of the language of maybe what an engineer or a petrophysicist uses that could be very beneficial in your development as well so take advantage while you can you know over this last year have there any been particular lessons that you've taken and applied to how you think about your own development your professional development and your career so communication is of course one that we uh, are especially I, i take on to improve myself through uh, communication through the writing and also through the presentation this uh, lockdown has also kind of opened up uh, because we are mostly working from home we are trying to interact with uh, colleagues uh, globally and therefore uh, you know even within a company we are you know exploring and interacting with more folks than what we used to because in the office we are mostly talking to the friends uh, which is sitting close to you but now we are uh, you know talking more and more people globally so hopefully we continue uh, this culture and keep the interactions going uh, even when we move to more face to face you know uh, office that would that would be one silver lining here you know kind of transitioning to the last couple questions here you know on on a kind of future oriented and and uh, curiosity measure here You know, if you could solve one mystery as a geophysicist, what what do you hope to solve? <laughs> so good question, Andrew. Um, as a uh, job characterized and geophysicist, uh, if I have to pick one, uh, I'll I'll go with the vertical resolution. What I mean is, Earth is very much uh, very heterogeneous, and from seismic has its own limitations. How much of the layer of the reservoir we can really re- resolve? So, giving example, 
our uh, geologist friends maybe look trying to image you know meter scale heterogeneity like layers rocks but from the seismic we may be able to tens of meters of the the layer to resolve and that's a big uh, limitations in the seismic uh, of course with the time we are improving uh, in terms of technology of course the, with the time the data quality itself is improving so that helps to get a better uh, resolutions but still far from what our uh, geologist or our geomodeler friends would like to have to get all the detail all you know the fine details of the reservoir so that's that's one problem that if i can you know in my lifetime even make a small improvement that will be a, a win you know you you offer some very helpful advice and words of wisdom throughout this conversation but kind of lastly to to maybe sum it up if you could just offer one last piece of advice or, or kind of one final thing to leave to the people listening that would that would help them succeed in this field as a geophysicist what what would you say SCG has a uh, vast you know resources both as uh, geophysics and also as a uh, you know human resource as an experts so becoming part of the SCG uh, will help uh, individual uh, learn the technology uh, know where the industry or the the geophysics is going in in the future become part of it uh, so if somebody is a student or a young um, ge- geophysicist become part of the various SCG committee that's a good way to get heard and also to make a difference treat the SCG like your community and become part of your community you learn how of course as i said i'm trying to improve my own post technology wise and also communication wise that's a two key aspects i think the uh, the SCG will help is it will help you improve your knowledge and being connected to the so many such a vast uh, you know human resources our colleague we have in the SCG world it, it will be helpful in in the good time and in the bad time uh, right now i think it's a bad time for the industry so if you know the right people that is always a, a plus yeah i really like that uh make SCG your community so i i appreciate your your helpful advice and and this has been a, a wonderful conversation dj it's been a pleasure to chat with you and thanks for sharing your your knowledge and being willing to talk with us thank you and yeah this is my pleasure thank you for listening to SCG's flagship podcast seismic sound off SEG produces these episodes to benefit its members, the geophysics community, and inform the public on the value of the science. To show your support for the show, please share this episode with a friend, colleague, or manager that would enjoy hearing this show. Your recommendation is the single best action you can take on behalf of SEG's podcast. To receive the latest episodes first, follow Seismic Sound Off on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or Google Podcasts. Original music by Zach Bridges. This episode was hosted, edited, and produced by me, Andrew Gary at 51 Features. The SEG podcast team is Ted Bakamjian, Dylan Fairley, Kathy Gamble, Ali McGinnis, and Mick Sweeney. Thank you for listening. This is Seismic Sound Off, signaling off.